to really bring, to really try to make a proper stream. And now we are back. Seeing here the referees being already prepared, and we're quickly going to introduce you to the team. So we've seen in white the Boston Norwich, and this game is starting, so maybe we're still focused on the match here. <laughs> of course, you see here with the number two, Thomas, Thomas Galliano in blue, and on the surface right now, number 19, Matteo Galliano, the two players. Um, here from from Boston, having a like a U21 mm -hmm. national team background, and both are also having a Colombian background. They are quite focused players here. We have seen them yesterday in a super critical match, uh, like a like crimmy match, playing against Firenze. This was a super nice match to to watch yeah. on. We have seen penalties. We have seen the penalty shooting. We have seen time penalties. We have seen like one team leading, then the other team leading. It was a super nice fight. Who and missed really it? You can, yeah. if, if you missed this picture. game, you could watch it yesterday. So it was Firenze against uh, playing against Boston. But now we're seeing the Bordeaux Frogs playing against the Boston Norways. We're seeing here the Frogs in blue against the Boston Norways here playing in white. And while the game is on the surface, I try quickly to introduce you to the players. So we're starting with White, Thomas Galliano, number two, Joshua Stone, number five, Timmy Burke, number six, Sid Sibley, number eight, Tommy Skinner, number ten, um, eleven is Katie Donovan, eleven, uh, Jay Gerald, number twelve, Christian Durham, number fifteen, Joseph Gomez, number seventeen, um, Matteo Galliano, number nineteen, Mike Pickard, thirty-one, Jan Schnorr, sixty-six, and John Stevens, who scored the one zero against yesterday against uh, Italy uh, with number ninety-nine. And still, we see this scrum at the surface now for a long time going. And uh, uh, give me a chance to read out the names from Frogs: Emil Bertrand, Olivier Jean, Deschamps, Anaï, Siver, Baptiste, Chada, Laurent, Benet, Julien. Gérard, Marc, De Leon, Oscar, uh, Guigin, uh, Ducdal, um, Fredou, Lucas, Lenoron, Lucien, Pellerin, Matisse, Sommar, Thomas. So yeah. we now didn't we are miss back here seeing the first here attack. It must be Anaïs here, the the girl here playing. She's like one of the founders here in Bordeaux. Yeah. Super like she brought, let's say, underwater rugby here from Krefeld when she was there working and living in Krefeld in Germany that she got contact with underwater rugby moved, moved back to Bordeaux and started to found their team it was years ago I remember it was around 2014 when Bordeaux 2014. organized the same the first tournament uh, must be some time there around so it's almost it's a, also five years ago and now it's the first time the frogs here playing at the Champions Cup that's really great to hear that underwater rugby is built up in areas where they haven't under, but also building up a team, being able to play on this level like a Champions Cup. That means you need a lot of more at home to be able to have a training area. You need uh, enough, like at least 20, 25 people in the training, usually routinely to build up a training on a high level you need ex excited people and this is really something exciting we see here because they are doing a good job this is Katie right from Boston no sorry And now we see here Boston, there was Thomas Galliano who's playing the pass to his brother. So these two guys here, they know each other quite well and they're trying here, of course, to try and hear some team attacks here as we've seen it, for example, yesterday, but also other players like Mike Pickard or uh, Tommy, the captain who defended the, the final, Tommy Skinner who defended the final uh, penalty. On the other side, we've seen the Frogs, they've played like at the first match against USC Zurich. They lost 6-0, it was on Friday. And... Uh, Let's say if I can find some other results of this team. So they, they had a very go. tough match against Molder with a 20-0. So they, they also gained here a lot of experience. Being here the first time is always hard because you have these strong physical teams here, well well playing teams, well trained teams. And for many of teams, even newcomer teams, is a certain level of learning, a certain level to see where I am, where's our level right now, what we need to improve, what we need to train. So it's a good 
exercise here to see okay where we are and where could we be where could we be and it will take the time to improve but we will see and not but we will see for sure next year a team which is quite different much more experienced and this will be a game-changing situation then then we see a team playing for other um, positions so far right, as right now so far as we have not seen a I'm not sure if we have seen so we, we just have seen the frog players against playing against uh, Zurich has already okay. mentioned and played against Ege University they lost 14-0 they lost 20-0 against Molde nevertheless uh, a, a super tough playing team and still here in the game so this this match against Boston they are really trying here now to play for their first victory for the first win in this tournament here to write let's say history to be the first French team here the French champion and playing here we know there are some other teams going on so the big difference between both teams or countries is that there's no not the real proper league in France you have some teams playing there you see uh, you have Bordeaux you have Toulouse there are some players in Paris um, there was initially there was a team in, in Nice not really practicing anymore but there's something is going on there nevertheless Bordeaux is let's say the only really proper practicing organized team in France so far while you have on the other side the USA with a with a proper league with a lot of teams you have the New Jersey Emmets you have the Marcos you have the the Boston Norway you have a team in Florida in, in, uh, in uh, San Francisco so at least all sure. around all around the USA and all the around the USA make but huge distances to see each other to meet each other exactly proper league rounds two three four tournaments they are playing during the year and the best team at the end is going here to the Champions Cup so uh, so, so that's one point it's, it's, but for the Boston Airways, as you said, it's a huge country, yeah. US at all. And I think you have been there um, still going one and a half hour for one training place. Yeah. So it's a great distance Sometimes, they have. Yeah. So playing to, having leagues is one point, but playing together during the usual training, you need to improve to keep up a team and keep up team training. That's, I think, the challenge in US. That's true, that's true. So far we see, this is quite nice to see here, two equal teams here now. We see here wrestling. So uh, the, the number eight from the USA here, Sid Sibley here, got surprised by, by, by this four dual player. But they are now with the scrambling at the surface. And we see the first referee call here, made by the deck referee. It's for in favor for Bordeaux. So Bordeaux here now in ball possession. There was no real scoring chance in the first eight minutes of this match, but there are still like two minutes in this half time to go. And then we can see another ten minutes and maybe we will we need to wait a bit longer. But here even the referees are now the referees are here interrupting the game, saying, Okay, no, it's again for favor of Boston. Yeah. Pushing or something like that was the issue. So both teams are playing here with the ball in the midfield around in the middle of the pool quite well but when it comes close to the basket there was no real proper chance of both sides so far 90 seconds left in this match and maybe we see here the Boston Norway it's here with the first chance and they're doing it they did it they great it. yeah executed well after the three throw they brought so the ball down to the basket coming from the open side massive and then it was like a team attack with so three Boston yeah. players around the basket and as a team like two hands on the ball they were pushing the ball inside. We're trying to find out who it was. So far, we now see a, a 1 0 lead here. And the Frogs counter attacking. This is giving them the power to now attack really um, with high pressure, but have been stopped by the Boston Networks. And there is go a scrumble going on, but anyway, the attack is stopped so far. So for the first half, we would not expect a goal, a score from the Frogs. And as you said before, they were close. Boston has been close to the basket, but no real chance from both teams. Close, but no real chance. And then it was there 
And that's a changing situation. And now we can expect a reaction from the frogs. And now the reverie is coming to the surface. He's probably giving a warning. He's pointing at one player. But we can unfortunately not see what's going on here. But he's Still like 15. giving a... Like always when the, when the referee comes to the surface, uh, there's something has happened. So he gives a, a, a warning, or he gives a. No, nah, it was number suspension. 15 in the in the in the camera. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Like that, that's like. So let's see. Referee is going back to the bottom, and there's a three throw in favor for Boston. And if you look here around, we just still. You still see seeing six players in the water, so there's no time penalty. But now there's the half time. All right, they can so relax a, yeah. there's and a discuss. There's a three minutes halftime break. We've seen just one goal so far, executed or scored by Boston. No. We will see another goal from the Boston Nobles because I think Boston goes forward. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So far, yeah, Boston is more engaged here. There was not a lot of things happening here during the first half, but with the end of the first half, we have seen more like more actions, more attacks from Boston side and we've seen one like one move early in the first half but then finally the last attack wave here immediately after the three throw was super uh, successful and super um, super tough and it could not be defended by the by the frogs so it was a well deserved 1-0 yeah, for Boston. Absolutely agree. And I see to be honest, Bastin here now in a bit of a favor. You see the team here around. They are really having a nice team spirit. They are physical also. So they have strong players. They have also fast players. There is a certain mix. While on the other side, you see the frog players. They are all also quite agile, but not that massive, not that heavy as other teams. And, and maybe not yet that experienced. Yeah, and sometimes weight is also a big advantage. If you're being fast, if you're being heavy, this is have really having an impact on the water. So I, this I, can be also mm, super I don't benefit. know what you mean. No, it's like <laughs> you, you can use the formula, like what is power? Power is like speed <laughs> yeah. uh, multiplied but, by, well, by weight. Wasn't, wasn't there the and comment from you <laughs> this morning saying, okay, the, the big bat boys like yeah, it's not swimming that just, fast? That's it, if you're being just... There are, I've seen a lot of underwater plays in my life and sometimes you see some, just some unsporty fat guys uh, swimming through the water like like uh, taking their bath and this is different it, here. It, On this level of competition you really need to be you need to be, to be comfortable with your body, you need to be trained, you have a certain yeah. stamina and you and need to know what to do. And you can be I think you need to make the advantage yeah. out of what you have and then it's the individual setting that's of the it. team. That's it. So that's it. That's it. That's it. You can't just watch and see and say that that's my uh, guess. But yeah, of course you can do, but you may not be right. Now you see here the Boston with their bags, with their shirts they are playing with in the league. Some players do it, some players do it not. We see here 99 Stevens, John Stevens, who scored yesterday the 1 0 against uh, Firenze. We see uh, number 8, uh, Sid uh, Sibley, who got surprised in the first half. So some, some players see even this pool is quite small, it's just 12 meters long, it's just 8 meters wide, and just 3.5 meters deep. So you need to be here really focused, really concentrated when you're having the ball, that you're yeah. not being like surprised by any other players. On the other side, we see the frogs here also waiting in the water for the starting signal, and there are just two seconds to go. And now we are in the second half of the 54th match here at the 32nd yeah, nice Champions Cup. Yeah. Nice move. Well man. done, and immediately they're attacking. We've seen this move a couple of times today. So in the, in the match before also it was a similar action and even the girls from Akaren have done this. So yeah. this is like, it seems to give you much more space. Of course, everyone is concentrating on the ball, being at the bottom and in you, when you are the first there and you have the time to bring the ball under your control, you can pass the ball towards the surface and there will be someone catching, taking the ball, picking up the ball and then you have a lot of space here to swim. You know, you see Thomas, Galliano here with his attack trying to score and this is also individual attack here was missing the second wave okay. but here now number 19 here with a massive attack from the open side of the field and the referee is rising his hand I also seen that the player was holding at the wall this is not allowed so number 19 yeah. Matteo Galliano started after his brother so was attacking he passed to Matteo Galliano he attacked from the open side and he was Last, like stopped by the 
goalkeeper and the goalkeeper was holding his hand at the wall this is not allowed yeah. so this is a penalty call here this is not a time penalty but let's say uh, here a penalty a one one situation we see right now players need to go out of the water there will be one attacker against one defender 45 seconds and it is like a like re bringing like bringing back this chance here to score let's see who will execute this one Number six. It's and now we see here number six, the captain Timmy Burke here is doing it himself and he's trying here in the fight with the number two. Unfortunately, we don't have a team list from the Frogs with numbers, but here we can see. Oh, this was. Oh, this bar got lost, but he gained it again, and now he's doing mm. it while the frog player is going to the surface. This was well attacked here. Timmy well Porky attacked. here, number six, is scoring 20 the 2 0. 20 seconds left. Yeah. So. Super tough, super tough here also for the defender to stay 45 seconds underwater by this level of pressure. Really fast. Timmy Boker here scoring the captain, number six, executing, scoring. The 2 0, and now we are here. Eight minutes left in this game. And the frogs still absolutely engaged. And it seems like they're empowered by receiving a score from the other team. But having this spirit all the time would bring them to success, I think. At least the frogs team knows how to score. They did it yesterday when they played 1 2 against. So they lost one and two and now this game is about who will be like let's say the last place in the match if the frogs are going to lose they will be uh, let's say the, the making the 13th place at least as the first participation at least they scored one goal unfortunately so far they have not won any match and it looks also like here that Boston is the dominating team here with 2-0 in lead seven minutes to score twice is it's possible, but super hard here, and so far I don't know how, what the frogs will change because they are well structured in their defense. Nevertheless, they are lacking, um, yeah, they are lacking in, in gain or like uh, you know, call, calling up their poten potential in attacking. It didn't had a super proper sure chance to score so far. Nevertheless, let's see. Six minutes, forty seconds left. As you said before, the frogs are an agile team, so this would be their individuality, like the chance. And being in the struggles like we saw in the last minute is like energy and power consuming and killing any agility, agility the frogs could bring on the table here. And oh, this is a really big scrum, no one under the scrum. Now the Boston Airways, there was... But it's not clear going up and down. With so a question here from the live stream here, Christoph Barzinski is asking if Philip is playing. No, Philip, I guess you're meaning Philip Mund. He's back. He moved back from the USA to Sweden, being now uh, a part of the uh, back being in Scandinavia, is being part of Scandinav Scandinavian teams. So Boston is coming here with a club team and also with the players they've just played in the league during the last season so Philip Moon the well-known player here in Underworld Rep is not here this year we do have five and, and if you have half any other left. players here now yeah of course yeah he's playing with Flipper uh, thanks for the thanks for the feedback Diana Madden so uh, yeah so he's back in, in Scandinavian but now uh, playing for Flipper as I guess he's living or working somewhere around Copenhagen so um, now we see here again Boston in a dominant position, as you said before. Oh, super nice! And oh, he here didn't Tommy see. is not seeing the ball falling. Yeah. Spain, but there's like Matteo Galliano now grabbing up the ball, passing the ball, and this is also a nice attack from and his brother Thomas. But he missed he the chance to score defended. here. Well defended here by the Frogs. Five minutes left here, two-zero lead for Boston so far. And really hot defended by the Frogs, so to say, hot Frogs. And here now the Frogs with the first counter attack, but stopped immediately here. Matteo Galeano here is a 
well experienced playing what in matter of his position you see him and his brother they're playing mm. forwards here and they're making a lot of pressure they make a lot of trouble for the frogs here they're not able really to reach the opponent side of the pool and again it's busted and ball possession here and again you see the two brothers here playing a ground playing the ball and there's a referee call something ball over the ah, surface so they, they right. drop the ball over the surface it's in favor for the frogs and let's see we've seen in the game before a nice attack immediately on oh, we've seen the boston executing their first score immediately after as we saw maybe we can see the frogs here as well but so far you see four players underwater and it's just thomas galliano with number two who disturbed the entire acting here so it was just one player who stopped four players in in, in la, let's doing their job and this is if the team is getting super confused, inefficient, super un inefficient, concentrated, yeah. you can do it like this when you are the experienced single one. Yeah. So it should be never that one player is like stopping four players and doing what they want to do. But this is what uh, what happened here right now. And this, of course, is rising the gaps, is rising the power, is rising the the opportunities here for the frogs. But now maybe here we see number 13 here on the open side. Unfortunately, the attacker here has not seen him, so. Well, frogs are doing here, trying to establish their first starting, team attack, yeah. but trying to start an attack from a close corner. Struggling in, in bringing it in action. And so already far, frogs in position at the go at the basket, but the attack is not going. Was not going forward. Stopped from the Boston Nervals before it even started. So it's some defend in pre-defending. It's really successful from the Boston Nervals. That's it. That's it. So. So far, again, ball on the surface, a referee call, referees are coming to the surface, there's a free throw in favor for the Frogs from Bordeaux. But still two scores and there's time behind, out. time yeah. out from Boston Airways. There's three, I'm almost I think three minutes left, two goals, two goals to do, super tough, not possible, but super tough, yeah. So the Boston Nervals on the safe side for a successful closing this game. Yeah. Yeah. Boston is doing here a great job. So there was no. They just didn't. I have not seen any any real big mistake in their defense. They were. They had these players at the at the basket and the defender. They're taking their position. Um, and they keep early going. enough, early enough, and they yeah. stayed super long underwater. So they. They're not played risky, they're not played like open, they're not playing just with luck. It looks super professional, super organized. Yeah. And even the four checkers here, Thomas and Matteo Galliano, are doing a great job to bring a lot of pressure, bringing a lot of trouble to this game style of the frogs. So the frogs don't find in here. They're not finding here a proper solution, opportunity here to to get close to the basket, to starting the first team attack. It's just, again, here we've seen the frogs executing this free throw but still again after one pass Boston is in ball position and this is like something they need to improve this is these are standards yeah. you know this is the, the minimum thing you're having the ball and you need to organize two three proper passes to keep the ball within your team within your roles to, to drop her to get your more ball possession now it's again Boston we are in the last two minutes and we see here Mike Pickard here attacking from above, passing the ball, but he lost it. And here again now the first, maybe a counter attack here from the Frogs. Number 73 are passing the ball. Mm, going, but three, three Still, Boston they need to Wales up, yeah. they in need position to stop already. They're attacking and then going back to the surface. Now here maybe the first attack. Now it's the first time that the Frog players with the ball close to the basket, but being attacked. By both, by Mike Pickett, and it must be and Thomas even if Galliano, he would and immediately it was stopped. Recover. Even if he would recover, there's no one under the scramble to yep. just go forward if the team member would release the ball, recover the ball, and get the hands free to and play now, the pass. And now we're having less than 30 seconds here left in this first half, and there's a comfortable 2 0 lead for. The Boston Norwoods and I predict that they are going to win this match also by <laughs> 2 0 because there's you not a lot of things that are happening now. here. It's super easy yeah. for them. They are playing in the offense, they are attacking, they're feeling comfortable with that, they are playing physical. It's hard and difficult for the frogs here 
to gain the ball from or yeah. to, to win the ball from the strong arms because you see they're attacking they're forcing the frog players to keeping their defending position to staying close to their baskets so less attackers are here available trying to gain the, or to win the ball and again again you see these waves one is attacking pass backwards another one is attacking here another chance maybe for the frogs but you see he's completely alone being attacked by two Boston players waiting and, too long and waiting too waiting long. It takes too long for the frogs here to to move from defense and to offense. Turn around again. Yeah. And here maybe we see a uh, ball got lost. Well defended by Mike Pickard. And again, Boston kept going in a high pressure right now, constantly yeah. all wait. the time, both half yeah. of the game. At least was a great match, well deserved by Boston. They 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 like put more in the water. They had more attacks, had a better strategy. We have seen the one one zero goal immediately after the three throws. So they came, they took the brief, and then they came down massively. And with three players, they scored. And then we have uh, seen another attack wave uh, resulting into her uh, like this team attack. Thomas Galliano attacked first, passed to his brother. He attacked from the open uh, from the close side. Um, the frog, the Bordeaux goalkeeper, he like stopped the attack with holding the ball. This was not allowed. And then we have seen later Timmy Burke, the captain of the number six, scoring the 2 0. And this is well executed. 2 0. With this result, I guess the Boston are becoming 11th. While we see Firenze probably on, top, on the place 12. And here the frogs being place 13. So next year, I think the frogs will be different. That's the prediction I give. With having now everything on YouTube, you can use a video from the game as a training um, basis, training material for the, all the next um, training lessons they will have. So there's a lot of things you, they can change. And the agility they show in between is something they, they could kept, keep. Kept, keep. So next time Boston Airways will um, see the frogs, the frogs will of course get the food in the door or the ball in the score in the basket. And They're trying their best, but we'll now we're going different. on to the female competition. We've been back with the ladies, with the girls in the water, seen here right now the team from Vienna playing against the Copenhagen girls from Amaga, we are club. Both teams have shown here super nice performance during this weekend. The Amaga girls here are with a little handicap just playing here with, I guess, eight or nine players. So they don't have a full exchange bench. Vienna, on the other hand, they're not, at least, they've started like founding their team just a couple of years ago. Nevertheless, they have done here a super well performance, especially when it comes to defending. So I was super surprised how consequent they are defending, how often and how long they're staying underwater with three and four players. We will see it hopefully also during the match. It will be like super strong individuals. And from Copenhagen, Amaga playing here against a, let's say, a well-trained, high-level stamina team from Vienna. And yeah, it will be nice to see who's going to win this match. We are looking for the winner of the who's getting a uh, fourth and fifth place yep. of this champions cup and with me is lorena hi lorena how are you doing i'm well uh i'm back uh who do you think are you we have a favorite uh, somehow or it's it's it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a surprise right i mean it's I always a surprise i will like, like this good thing here is that you have two teams i i was really sh like uh, supporting those vienna they are quite new and they're doing a super great job. They made a super well game against like the top yep. teams, such as uh, Langen, for example. They just lost 0-0. So, um, of course, I would I would like to see them winning again. On the other hand, you have Amerga. We remember last year they have been yeah. here third with just seven, seven or eight well, girls. Seven, seven. seven. Again, they are being here back with eight girls. Always seen like this. This team spirit, they are playing together, yes, like, you know, they just ate against the rest of the world. And also this story is super nice to see. And maybe, to be honest, I, 
Why say? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I would, I would, I would just say, I would like the surprise that Vienna is going to win. Yeah. But let's see, Amaga is doing also a great job and hopefully the best team will win at the end. But maybe it's come to a team list? Uh, yes, here we have, look, uh, have Amaga and Vienna are both... Uh, Perfect, so I'm going to start with the ladies from Vienna. So we see here uh, with number 9, Ulrike Janowski, number 18, Sabrina Scheuer, 23, Magdalena Wirtz, 26, Jacqueline Hayes, 29, Sophie Bach.